Mushrooms don't grow from seeds or bulbs like most plants we grow and harvest for food. They grow from spores. And so long as the spores from those dried mushrooms haven't been exposed to extreme heat or sunlight, there's a good chance you can use them to grow even more mushrooms. In this video, I'll be sharing everything you need to know to grow mushrooms from dried mushrooms. Just a quick warning and word of caution before we get started. Many mushrooms are poisonous. Never grow or consume mushrooms you are unsure of their origin or variety. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started. Three factors that determine success when using dried mushrooms. Growing mushrooms from dried mushrooms isn't the most common practice, but it is one carried about by many mushroom lovers every year. The following factors are among the most important if you want to have a successful crop of mushrooms from the spores of dried mushrooms. 1. Type of mushroom. The type of mushroom that you use when growing mushrooms from dried mushrooms is crucial as not all species are suitable. Once dried out, certain species of mushrooms don't rehydrate as well as others. Likewise, some types of mushrooms are more fragile than others and are less heat resistant, meaning their spores are destroyed when exposed to lower temperatures than other mushrooms. 2. Dehydration method. The dehydration method that you use for growing mushrooms from dried specimens is also extremely important. For example, if you dry your mushrooms in the open air and sunlight, the heat from the sun may be enough to kill the spores. Likewise, dehydrators may expose the mushroom spores to excessive temperatures that their spores can't survive. The best method for dehydrating mushrooms that you plan to use for growing fresh specimens is air drying them at room temperature. A tabletop or shelf is the perfect location. A windowsill with indirect sunlight works well. Just make sure to flip the mushrooms from side to side as needed to help the natural drying process along. 3. How long the mushrooms have been dried. Mushroom spores last for years, right? Well, technically, yes they do, but that's when they're in the ground as nature intended. If you want to use your dried mushrooms for growing batches of new ones, they need to be used within 12 months of drying and storing them. Waiting longer than a year to rehydrate or take spore prints from dried mushrooms is a gamble. How to grow mushrooms from dried mushrooms. Before getting started, keep in mind that you need clean tools and a sterile workspace when dealing with mushrooms. 1. Rehydrate mushrooms. The first step to growing mushrooms from dried mushrooms is to rehydrate them. The easiest way to do so is by spreading the mushrooms out on a flat surface and dripping one or two drops of water onto each cap. Using an eyedropper is highly suggested as it doesn't take more than an extra drop or two of water to potentially ruin or wash away precious spores. 2. Collect spores. Once your mushrooms are rehydrated, carefully remove the caps from the stems. Take the cap of the mushroom and place it on a sheet of paper. You can trim them down into small squares before or after making the spore prints. Either fold the paper over, sandwiching the cap, or add a second sheet of paper on top of the mushroom cap. Place a book with a bit of weight or something similar directly on top of the cap. Wait 24 to 48 hours and remove the weight. Your paper will now have a fresh spore print ready for use. Th 3. Add spores to growing medium. The next step is really a couple of steps in one. First, you need to set up a proper growing medium, and then you need to inject spores into it. You may do so by using a growing tray or fruiting chamber that measures several inches deep, at least four to six inches, and 12 inches by 12 inches in size or larger. Fill the tray with a mushroom substrate or a homemade mixture of organic compost and manure. Leave only an inch or so of the pan empty. Directly on the top of the growing medium, spread the spore from the spore print. A knife tip or X-Acto knife works well for scraping the spores off of the paper. Be sure to keep everything clean and sterile. Otherwise, mold and other bacteria may pop up instead of or with your new mushrooms. Also, keep the growing medium moist at all times. If it dries out, the entire process grinds to a halt. Four. Incubate spores. If you followed the instructions above, the next step is upkeeping the future colony of mushrooms while the spores incubate. S simply keep things moist and the temperature at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The combination of water, nutrients from the growing medium, and warm temperatures are the magic recipe for mushroom growth. After the first three weeks or so, the temperature should be reduced to approximately 55 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit 
and left there for the rest of the operation. When you lower the temperature, you also need to cover the mushroom mycelium with soil, just fill the empty inch or so of space you left. Once covered with soil, the silky white mycelium should begin to produce tiny pin like mushrooms. Three or four weeks later, those little pins are fully developed mushrooms ready to pick and devour, dehydrate, or do whatever else you might have planned for them. If you found this content valuable, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more plant care tips and growing information.